as our shepherd. Uh, the last few weeks we've been talking about some of the stories from the life of David. And some of the psalms that came out of his life, out of his experiences, and his relationship with the Lord. And one of those psalms is Psalm 23 that he, he developed. Now, this, this may not have been written until toward the end of his life, but of course he's, he's reflecting, David's reflecting on his time out with the sheep on the hills. And, and he, he's thinking, you know what? It seems like the Lord himself, Yahweh, he's like my shepherd. He is my shepherd. And he writes this, this psalm. Now, Jesus is, is Yahweh, right? So we can say that Jesus is our shepherd. In fact, Hebrews 13 speaks of Jesus as the great shepherd of the sheep. And 1 Peter 2 calls Jesus the, the shepherd and overseer of your souls. 1 Peter 5 calls Jesus the chief shepherd. So he's our shepherd. And of course, John 10, Jesus himself says, I am the good shepherd. So think about the, this idea of God, Jesus himself, being the good shepherd. Uh, this, is a, this is very special to early Christians. One of the most common themes in the Roman catacombs was Jesus depicted as holding a, a lamb over his shoulders as the good shepherd. This is, right here, is actually a, a, a painting, a picture of a painting on a wall in some catacombs of Jesus holding a lamb on his shoulders. This is from the second century, second century. So why are Christians, why are Jesus' followers looked upon as shepherd? Why does God call us sheep? Do you ever think about that? I mean, sheep are, are pretty dumb. <laughs> I mean, have you, ever, have you ever heard of a team, a football team, or a baseball team even being called the lambs or the sheep? I mean, you hear things like wolverines, lions, but never sheep. Why? <laughs> You know, sheep, sheep, uh, sheep are kind of dumb for one thing. I heard of this situation in, in uh, Turkey one time. It was 1,500 sheep that fell off a cliff. 1,500. Well the, well, the shepherds were off having lunch or something. And the first 400 died, and then the rest fell on top of the 400. They had a fluffy landing, and they survived, but... My goodness, why did they just follow over the cliff? Um, you know, one farmer said that if you have a bunch of sheep in a barn, you, could, you can stretch a rope across the door before you let them out, and then the first few people jump over the rope. Then up, those sheep will jump jumping over that empty no rope there. They'll still jump because the rest of the flock. Kind of see how or why God compared to because how many we foolishly follow others into some stupidity that we kind of even knew was stupid, and yet we followed the crowd. We went along with them. But let's uh, let's look at look at the verse one here. More, more closely, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay, Yahweh, and, and we think Jesus, is my, sh my shepherd. My shepherd, not just the shepherd, not just a shepherd, but he's my shepherd. This is very personal. Um, he's, he cares for me. He watches over me. He preserves me. He loves me. This, this is very personal. And that's, I think, one reason why Psalm 23 is so popular. Maybe the, it's, I'm sure, the most famous psalm of all of them. Maybe the most famous passage. Because it's so personal. He's my shepherd. I shall not want. Now, this is King James English. What does that mean? I shall not want. It means I shall not lack. I, I have no needs. 
Now, why, why can I say I have no needs? Because the Lord is my shepherd. It's, it's saying a couple things. It's saying all my needs are supplied by my shepherd. And it's also saying that my desires are aligned with my shepherd's will. And so I, I don't want to have anything less or more than he has already provided. He, I trust my shepherd. He is my shepherd. I, trust, I love him and I trust him. I don't always know what I need, but I trust my loving shepherd, my good shepherd, to give me what I need. And then verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. So our shepherd, as, as the shepherd, like for real sheep, the shepherd knows the good places to make his, his sheep rest. He guides them to the green pastures. He knows where the still waters are, where it's easier to, to drink. And our shepherd knows exactly where to lead us and give us what we need. And then verse 3, he restores my soul. Now, what do you think this refers to? I think it's, it's probably thinking, David is probably thinking about the rescue of a, of a lost sheep, like a straying sheep that's been brought back. What do you know about sheep? Are, are, are sheep notorious for leaving the flock, getting distracted? I think, I think we are too. Um, you know, sheep will, will stop and, and graze at a clump of grass. And when they wander from the flock, aren't they in danger? They get, they get, they're open, opening themselves to, to uh, maybe a wolf coming or a bear coming to, to eat them. And so the shepherd brings back the straying sheep and restores it. And if we repent of our straying, the Lord will bring us back, won't he? He'll forgive us. And then he says, uh, the, the shepherd leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The shepherd is a guide, and he takes us to where we need to go, and he knows what's needed. And look at, look at this, the, the paths of righteousness. He leads us in the paths of righteousness. So this is a, there's a moral aspect to this. He, he's, he's giving David... An opportunity to, to, to do righteousness, to live right, and to be right, to be whole, to be healthy spiritually. The path of, of righteousness is the way of holy obedience. And it's for his name's sake. His name's sake. The shepherd gets the glory. He gets the credit for, for the sheep walking in, in righteousness. And then look at verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So what are valleys symbolic of? I mean, we've seen beautiful pictures of valleys, look so nice. But, but spiritually, valleys are symbolic of, of the dark places, right? The depressing places in our lives. And, you know, David had confidence that whatever he faced, that the Lord would be with him, even in, even in the dark times. He's not alone. Uh, and then look at the, the, the rod and the staff. The rod may be the club that, that David would use to, to drive away the, the enemies of the sheep. And our shepherd will do whatever it takes to keep us, to protect us, to, to guard us. And the staff may be what he used to, to help guide the sheep, bring them back in, rescue them from a, a crevice or something, bring them back into the fold. And so what we need to do is, is follow this shepherd uh, because we know that nothing will take the Lord by surprise. Nothing will take the shepherd by surprise. We can trust him. And the closer we get to the shepherd, the more serenity, peace, and comfort we experience. Let's, uh, let's move over to John 10, where Jesus actually claims to be the good shepherd. Uh, he begins that, that chapter in, in John 10 by saying, Anyone, Jesus says, who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by, by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd 
of the sheep. And of course, that's Jesus. He's referring to himself. And the gatekeeper opens the gate for him. And I think, well, maybe that's the father. And the sheep listen to the shepherd's voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. Think of that. If you're his sheep, he knows your name, and he speaks directly to you, directly with you. He knows us personally. He calls us by our name. He knows us. Wow. And then when he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them. Okay, he leads. He doesn't drive. And his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Do you know the shepherd's voice? If you're his sheep, you know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Therefore, Jesus said again, Verily, truly, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. If, if they're really my sheep, they're not going to listen to the thieves and the robbers. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, because Jesus is, is the way to be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes, on, comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full, or have it more abundantly. God wants to give all of us an abundant life filled with his joy, filled with his love and his peace. And, and success spiritually. And then he says, I am the good shepherd. So he just directly comes out and says, I am the shepherd that I'm talking about. I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He knew he was going to give his life as a sacrifice so that we could be forgiven and transformed, be his sheep, be his followers. And he says again, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And he says again, I lay down my life for the sheep. He's giving us life. That's how much he loves us. So we can know the shepherd. He can know us. He can call us by our name. And then finally, just to summarize what we've learned here, how do you get to know the shepherd? How, did, how do we get to know the shepherd? Well, we saw here that we have to recognize that he is the only way. He says, I am the gate. And in John 14, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to get to heaven, people, you've got to, you, you've got to go through Jesus. There's no other way but him. He is the gate. Um, we have to reject all false shepherds. They come to steal, steal and to kill and destroy. So we don't have to reject all, all false gods, false Christ. He says, my sheep don't recognize this, a, a stranger's voice. So we have to reject all the idols in our lives, all the unbiblical ideas that you have about God, who God is. And we have to repent of all of our sins. Jesus died for those sins. He says, I give, again, he says, I give my life for the sheep. So we have to repent of our sins and reject sin and allow him to come in, receive him as our savior, as our shepherd, as our guide, as our leader. Whoever enters through me will be saved, Jesus said. Have you done that? Have you entered into the gate, through the gate? Do you know him? Is he your Savior and your shepherd. We have to choose to be a follower of the good shepherd. He says, my, my sheep follow me. So if you're not following Jesus, guess what? Guess what? If you're not following Jesus, guess what? You're not one of his sheep. And what does it mean to follow Jesus? Part of it means he's number one in your life. He's more important to you than anything else. And you obey his, he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so we've, we've got to follow him. And then finally, listen for the voice of the shepherd and allow him to daily guide you. 
Allow him to lead you beside the still waters, to lead you in the paths of righteousness. So how do you listen? How do we listen for that voice? Well, what's one great way? Somebody say it. What's one very important way to listen to the voice of God, the voice of the shepherd? Say it. Read your Bible. Read your Bible every day with, with an openness to, to do his will. And I would like to see, I mean, this is not a, that's not a big commitment from you all, but I would like to see if, if you're willing to open up the word of God next, this next week. Search the scriptures, open up the Bible, go to a Bible app and read from the Bible this week. I like, I'd like a show of hands. Are you willing to do that? To get into the word of God this week. Raise your hand. You're willing to do that today. Wonderful. Yes. The Bible is transformative. He will, he will guide you. So you read your Bible every day. You pray, for, pray and ask for guidance. There are some things that he'll want you not to do anymore. Right? Don't do it. Stop doing that. those things. There will be other things that he'll want you to do that you haven't been doing, do those things. And then trust Christ. Trust in him. Trust Christ with your life. He is the good shepherd, and he will guide you. He won't lead you astray. One day, the shepherd is going to the king, who is also the shepherd. He's going to shepherd, separate the sheep from the goats. Right? Remember that story? He talks about this in, in Matthew 25. He says, when the, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he'll sit on his glorious throne and he's going to separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he'll say to the, he'll, he'll put the sheep on the right and the goats on the left and he'll say to the right people, the sheep, he'll say, come you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. But he's then he's going to say to those on the left, depart from me, those who are cursed. So, question. Will you be one of the sheep or will you be one of the goats? What do you want to be? Do you want to be one of the sheep? If you do, then allow God to birth you as a lamb into the flock and follow the good shepherd, for he is good. All right, we have a song by... The uh, 